Moms, and I am live right now and waiting for my viewers on VidChat to join us. So pardon me while I make sure that my background looks nice and my lighting is good. I'm so glad that you're here. Just bear with me. I'm waiting to get the notification that my fans are watching the show. Okay. I think that looks okay. It says your fans have been notified. Yay. Okay. Waiting for my first viewer. Be just another second. Grab some tea or coffee, get comfortable, and enjoy today's show. Okay. Hi, I'm Nicole, the host of The Break for Moms. Thank you so much for joining me and taking a break from your regular day as a mom to hear what's new at The Break for Moms. Today, I have a great show planned. I am going to, in a few minutes, announce the winner from the past few weeks contest. It was an Usborne book contest. And um, unfortunately, I didn't have that many people enter the contest, but I am going to go ahead and finish up the contest today as promised and announce the winner. So we can look forward to hearing who that winner is. And we're going to talk about some celebrity moms and a very popular new celebrity mom to be. Can't wait to tell you about that. As well as some great do-it-yourself fall crafts for kids of all ages. I went on the internet and searched Pinterest to find my favorite ones. So I'm going to share my favorites from the list. There were thousands and thousands. So I'm just going to share a few. But I'm really excited to share some new ones that are new to me that I'm going to try out with my kids at home. And I hope that you'll try with your kids at home as well. Now we're going to talk about parent teacher conferences. This is going to be my first parent teacher conference as the parent of a now elementary school student, a kindergartner. I went to parent teacher conferences with my preschooler, but I feel like kindergarten really kind of ups the bar quite a bit and I want to make sure that I'm prepared and I want to make sure that all of you are prepared as well whether or not you have a student who is new to school or maybe an older student it's very important that you are prepared with certain questions to ask when you do talk to your child's teacher or multiple teachers if they're in middle school or high school um, even sixth graders or fifth graders have multiple teachers and of course you know you always can talk at the elementary level to music teachers um, phys ed teachers, art teachers, language teachers. There are many, many different teachers and it's important to be prepared to talk to any and all of them. Whether or not you have a child who is um, the overachiever, non-problematic, uh, people pleaser, A plus student, or maybe a child that um, is struggling in school. Um, it, either way, it's very important that you make parent teacher conferences a very special opportunity for you to get to know your child's teacher or teachers and to let your children know at home that you care about what they're doing and you want to support the teacher or teachers and work as a team to work with your child or children at home so we're going to talk about that too so let's go ahead and start with the drawing i know there are only um, a few people watching right now but i want to get this out of the way otherwise i am going to forget i don't know about all of you moms at home but I am very, very forgetful. And you know, I always laugh about this and say, before I was a mom, I was not a ditzy person, but for whatever reason, being a mom, I feel distracted all the time. I'm constantly wondering where my kids are at, what they're doing, who's getting into trouble. Um, if I didn't prepare something for my oldest that's in school, I'm wondering, did I pack everything in his bag that he needed? Should I be looking at my phone in case there's an emergency and the teacher calls me? Or um, you know, what do we have going on tonight? Are his clothes ready for the next day? For my three-year-old, um, does she need to go to the potty because she's working on potty training still and I need to make sure I don't forget and I put her on in a timely manner so she doesn't have an accident. And then my little one-year-old who is crawling and walking around everywhere, I'm worrying whether or not I have the house perfectly baby-proofed at any time because having two older kids that drop things all over the floor, I just never know. So I'm very distracted. Um, Anyhow, um, so I apologize about that. If I ever misspeak on the show or forget about something, I'm trying very hard, but like most parents, I am a little bit distracted. Okay, so 
here you see I don't have a ton of names in here because not a lot of people entered the contest um, but for future contests no I am going to try to run them off of my new show blog and that is because I want to get some subscribers to my new blog it's called the break for moms and it's www.thebreakformoms.com with the number four so please check out the blog I will post archived broadcasts from the show today and uh, past shows so you can watch them all in one place on the blog and you also can read about tips and resources and other information that I shared on the show pictures other videos um, links to resources on the web so you're gonna want to check it out so make sure you subscribe there is a section on the right hand side of the website where it says subscribe via email all you have to do is put in your email I know people don't like to get a lot of emails I promise you you'll just get no more than one week and that is with my latest blog post with the latest show archived on the website and a few tips and tricks that I mentioned on the show that's it so go ahead and make sure you subscribe my goal is to get 100 subscribers this week I want to do it this week and you at home can help me okay so if you have friends and family members that are moms that would be interested in watching the show either live or archived on the blog and would like some tips and tricks to help make their life as a parent easier please 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 tell them about the show the show will not grow unless we as a team share this information so thank you so much ahead of time for doing that and I look forward to hearing from new subscribers and of course on the website there are places where you can reply and leave comments I love to get feedback you can give me feedback on this show live as well by calling into the show and I have not had many callers which I'm really disappointed about I think that I don't know maybe I'm wrong here but I think maybe people are intimidated about calling into the show maybe you feel like they're not you know looking your best I don't know you want don't want to be seen by other people I will tell you yes if you call into the show it is two-way live streaming so the caller will be seen by all of the viewers as well but it's okay this is meant to be fun it's like girl talk okay think about when you go to a coffee shop and you sit with your girlfriends okay it's just like that although if you are a guy watching the show if you're a parent that's okay you could call in too um, we don't want to leave the guys out um, of course I would like to include my husband in this show at some point when he feels brave Anyhow, don't be shy. Call into the show. There is no better time than the present to call in. You will never be 100% ready to call into the show, okay? It's fun. You can talk to me. Say hi. Tell me your mom's story. Um, give me a tip. Give me a trick. Ask me a question. Anything that you want to do, just say hi. Have fun. Socialize. I know if you're a mom like me of little ones, you probably don't get to socialize that much if you're a stay-at-home mom. I am a work-at-home mom, so I stay at home with my kids most of the time, and I get kind of lonely, so... This show, um, if you're just tuning in for the first time today, was really a, a result of me feeling lonely and feeling like there may be other moms out there that don't have a way to connect with other moms and gain the support that they need. So the Break for Moms was born, and it's a chance for you to not only get support, but also take a little break from your day and really just enjoy some me time. Even if you have little ones next to you, have them sit next to you on the couch while you're watching, give them a coloring book or... Um, or do one of these do-it-yourself activities while you are watching the show. Maybe you can do these with your younger children next week while you're enjoying the show at the kitchen table or you know wherever you have a table and you can sit. Did you know that you can watch the show on the Big Chat app? So if you have a cell phone or a tablet that is a smartphone or tablet um, where you can download either the Apple app um, from the Apple Store or for Android at the Google Play Store. BitChat has an app. You can download that, um, and it, it's a great way to watch the show on the go. So if you're a busy mom on the go, it's okay. You can still watch the show. In fact, there may be some moms right now watching during their lunch break. If you are on the East Coast and you have a late lunch break um, or – even um, I have one friend, uh, hopefully she doesn't get mad at me for saying this, but she's taking a pumping break because she's a nursing mom. So if you have a pumping break, you may be able to schedule your pumping break around the show if you work outside the home. So it's 1 o'clock uh, p.m. Eastern time. The show starts every Monday. So if you're tuning in for the first time, mark your calendar every Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. That's 10 a.m. on the West Coast. And the show will be roughly one hour each week. Uh, depending on what's going on and what information I have to share and you know hopefully none of my kids are sick or I have to run 
some type of important errand that would cause me to end the show early, but that won't happen very often, okay? So let's talk a minute about that celebrity news that I wanted to share with you. First off, did all of you know that Janet Jackson is pregnant with her first baby? Do you know how old Janet Jackson is? She's 50 years old and she's pregnant with her first baby. I have to give her a lot of credit. I am not judging um, that, hey, if she is healthy to be pregnant at 50, I say, you go girl. Um, I don't know what my body would feel like. We know that Janet Jackson is probably in better shape than a lot of us might be at 50. But um, wow, um, I don't know what to say other than wow. Um, good for her though, that's great, okay? So if you are a mom and maybe you're trying to have another baby and you're having a hard time and you're worried about your age, um, I just wanna let you know, Janet Jackson is 50 years old and she's having a baby. Yes, of course, she probably has a lot more resources financially to help that along. I, mean, I don't know what step she took to become pregnant, it's, you know, completely natural or not if she had um, in vitro. I don't know those details. Um, but know that, you know, people are having babies a lot older and it's very socially acceptable. So no one should worry about that. Anyhow, um, I did have one other bit of celebrity news and I don't remember what it was. I got to grab my notes. Okay, one second, I gotta run and grab my notes. They're right here next to me. Pardon the strange view of me getting up off of my couch here a second. I gotta grab my notes. See, I told you I'm forgetful. Um, sorry about that. But I, it was something I really, really wanted to share and I just don't remember, which is why. Um, mm, I don't know. Okay, I guess that was it. Okay, so let's talk about fall do-it-yourself projects. Okay, the first one is one that I did when I was a kid and this, you know, nobody came up with this. Oops. That's my little show logo back there. Let me turn this so you can see. See the break for moms with the number four. So when you check on social media, make sure you use that number four. Okay. Um, so do you remember as a kid doing the leaf rubbing where you took a leaf from outside and you put it under a piece of paper and then you took a crayon and you peeled the um, paper off the crayon and then rubbed over top the paper and the leaf underneath kind of the, the texture of the leaf ended up creating the pattern on the piece of paper. So I did that with my kids outside and it was great. And I don't know what made me think of it. I was just thinking about when I was a kid, I think I did it in kindergarten or preschool. And my kids had a great time. It was a great way to keep them playing outside and let them you know, be hands on with the leaves because all kids like to play with leaves, but I don't want my kids to just pick up leaves and just throw them around. I want them to do something productive. So I felt like we were really productive the other day. I have a little um, plastic kids table with a bench hooked to it that the kids can sit on outside. And both of my older two kids, my five-year-old and three-year-old just sat at the table and I each had them pick out their own leaf. So that was a big deal. They got to pick out their own leaf. It didn't matter which one they wanted. Um, and I explained to them that it didn't have to be a perfectly clean leaf. They were my oldest, he was very particular and concerned that it had to be this beautiful, perfect leaf. It doesn't. You just have to put it under the paper. And, you know, it's nice to grab leaves with different patterns on them, different shapes. That makes it more interesting. You can combine them in your artwork. But, um, you know, you can use any crayon color if you want to use typical autumn colors. You could do red and green and orange and yellow and brown. Um, but my son used a blue crayon and it was fun. It was fun. So that's the first one, leaf rubbings. If you have not done that with your kids, you have to do that um, because it's fun and you'd be surprised how intricate they can make them. And then if they really want to make it defined, they can take a crayon after and kind of go over the outline, the shape of the leaf. I did that for mine because of course I wanted to try too. So it's not just for kids. It can be for adults and it's fun. Um, the next one I saw in a magazine. Um, I don't remember which magazine, but I also saw it online at countryliving.com based on Country Living Magazine. And it is a candy corn parfait. And it's a healthy one because, you know, when you look and you read in magazines, I know I look at a lot of magazines, usually in the grocery aisle when I'm um, standing in line ready to check out. Um, I don't buy a lot of magazines anymore because everything's on the internet now. You can look up a lot of things. But anyhow, most Halloween and autumn treats. I feel like most of them are unhealthy desserts, to be quite honest. But this recipe is a little healthier. So think of a candy corn. Think of the colors and the layers of a candy corn. Okay. So you start on the bottom with pineapples. That's your yellow layer, cut up chopped pineapples. And, you know, use a clear cup, one of those clear plastic cups. You can buy a set of those. And then you can put um, 
your orange is your next layer, uh, your mandarin oranges, the little oranges, and then you top it with whipped cream. Okay, so you've got yellow, orange, and your white like the candy corn, and then you can actually put a candy corn on top if you want. Super cute, super easy, looks really nice in the white cups. And if you're not a do-it-yourself person like me, which I'm totally not a Pinterest mom, um, this is easy. I'm totally gonna do this with my kids, and it's healthy because it's fruit. And a little bit of whipped cream doesn't hurt anybody. You can use the ready whip, that's the most natural. Um, you know, cool whip's an option too, but I like the ready whip because it's a little healthier. And then if you want to put your candy corn on top, or you can put chocolate if you want to make it fancy. Um, but that's kind of a fun treat, and you can do that for a party or just for a fun after school treat. Sometimes it's nice to have something different to get kids to eat healthy. They don't always want to eat the same old thing, and I feel like I do the same old thing. So anyhow, that was number two on my list. Now, here's another interesting one. I saw this on Country Living as well on their website. So you can go to, um, I believe it was just www.countryliving.com or Country Living Magazine. I'm not sure. Just type in Country Living and type in um, fall or I think it was autumn, fall activity, autumn activities for your kids. Um, if you do a search on the internet, you'll pull up all kinds of stuff, but it's the one on Country Living. And um, so they have like 60, 40 to 60 different things. I didn't have time to look at all of them. I was looking right before the show. But another thing they did, this is so cool. It's a, you make a leaf bowl, okay? But you don't use real leaves, you use a leaf garland. Um, you could get some at the dollar store, it's super cheap. But what you wanna do is cut some of the leaves off of the garland and then rip off like the, um, the, the plastic stem and then like the, um, I don't know what you call that, like the, you know, the, the plastic part that goes on the leaf. I gotta, sh I gotta get one to show you, but I don't see one nearby. Um, anyways, you pull like the hard plastic boning, like the skeleton of the leaf. I think that's how they described it, the skeleton of the leaf. Pull that off so it's just a fabric. You don't want any of that hard plastic stuff because that doesn't stick when you use glue, okay? So you take those leaves and then you take a blow up a balloon and put it in um, some sort of bowl that kind of holds the balloon in place. It has to be something with like a hot high sides on it. So set the balloon in there with the tied part on the bottom. Okay. So the balloon is blown up and here's the tied bottom. It's in this container. And then you take a Mod Podge, which is, is not expensive at all. You can actually, I think, get little, I know if, if you have a Dollar Tree by you, I was surprised to see that they sell little bottles of Mod Podge for a dollar. So if you're not sure if you want to use a whole big container of Mod Podge, it's not very expensive. You can get it at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or Joanne Fabrics, anywhere where crafts are sold. So you take that Mod Podge, I think you can just use the basic kind where they have a stiff version that has extra hold to it. So paint the top one fourth of the bloom and take all of those paper, not paper, cloth leaves that you cut off of the leaf garland, the, the faux leaf garland, and um, you glue them one at a time, press them on the balloon, okay? So it's about one fourth of the way down, you're not covering the whole balloon, and then give those time to stick, okay? And then pop the balloon at the bottom. And once it's dry, you know, and you pop the balloon, the balloon will come off, and then you have this bowl. You can flip upside down, and it is made of leaves. It's beautiful. I thought, wow, this is going to be way too hard to do. It, I mean, it looked really, really, really nice. So um, your kids could make it. Teens could do this. Um, but I would want to use this at a party. And, you know, it costs as much as a little container of Mod Podge and, you know, paintbrush or whatever one you want to use to put the glue on. They say to use one of those foam paintbrushes, which you can get all of that at the dollar store. And then the faux leaf garland you can get at the dollar store as well. I have one on my staircase right now that I use. So just buy one of those, cut off the leaves, make sure you pull off that plastic part, the skeleton of the leaf and the stem so that there's no plastic on the fabric at all. And then that fabric should stick. But one tip I want to give you for that project is that you need to make sure that um, the Mod Podge is tacky first. So like put it on the balloon and then let it sit for about 30 seconds. And then um, you will have a beautiful leaf bowl once that dries and pop the balloon, pull that balloon off and there you go, flip it around. Um, you can look at photos online, Country Living, that's a great one. And by the way, the things that I share on the show, no one is um, paying me money to share these things. These are just me as a mom picking up cool things and resources and sharing them. That's all it is. Um, so just wanted you to know that in case you're wondering why I'm sharing certain things. Hi, if you're just tuning into the show, I'm Nicole, the host of The Break for Moms. Thank you so much 
for taking a break from your day. Um, I want everyone to keep in mind this is a live show, so I feel the need to occasionally say hello again in case we have new people joining the show. If you're wondering what's in the background, this is my show logo. So you will see it throughout social media. The Break for Moms, I was talking about the blog that I have and how um, I only have about six subscribers. It's a new blog. Well, it's an old blog that I am not revamping as the show blog. So um, I do some commercial work and um, some print jobs on the side where I do a little bit of acting and a little bit of modeling. I, I wouldn't call myself a model because I'm 5'2", so I don't do anything like that fancy runway stuff. But um, anyhow, I have a background in the creative arts. So when I started the show, I decided to take my old website that was more of like my portfolio and turn it into the Break for Moms blog. So I'm hoping that all of you watching today, there's 41 right now, that means 41 potential subscribers to the blog. I need you to do me a huge favor. After the show, sorry, I keep moving, I'm excited. <laughs> After the show, I need you to go to the show website. This is a different website from BidChat. Go to www.thebreakformoms.com with the number four, just like on my logo here. Sorry, when I move, I notice that my camera goes out of focus. So I'm going to try not to move so much. So go to that blog, and on the right side of the blog, on the right side of the website, you will see something that says subscribe via email. All you have to do is put in your email. I know everybody gets a million emails. I promise you, you will not get more than one a week. And that's with this archive video from today or whatever the current show is on the blog with a few resources and tips that I shared from the show. That's all you get. Um, and you can share that with your friends and family, anyone you know that's a mom or a parent or a teacher, anyone else that deals with children. Um, this is pertinent information to all of them. So please, please, please share the word, share the blog, sign up and subscribe. That will help me tremendously. It's great motivation for me. And it gives you a chance to give me feedback on the blog or you could give me feedback directly on the show. Here's how you can do it. The easiest way is just simply give me a thumbs up right now. Click on the thumbs up icon that is below this video and I will see right away that I have an extra thumbs up and then I'll know that you can see me and hear me and you're enjoying what you're watching. So thanks ahead for that. And of course you can as well call into the show at any point if you feel so inclined. I would love that. I have not had any callers in the last few weeks, which is really disappointing because part of what makes the show so much fun is the aspect of it being two-way live streaming, which means if you call into the show, we can talk face-to-face -face through our cameras, and the rest of the viewers can see us as well. So you could call in and share a funny story about being a mom. You could call in and ask me a really important question, or you could just call in and say hi and say, hey, you know, I'm so-and-so, I've got, this is my mom's story, I've got this many kids, and you know, I was feeling kind of, down in the dumps today and I turn on your show and now I feel like my day is going to be better because I don't feel so lonely anymore. I don't feel alone. I don't feel like I'm the only other mom out there that's, you know, having a hard time. Let me tell you, this show is not to just put forward this perfect picture of motherhood. I will be the first to tell you that it's hard. It's very hard. And I created the show as a platform for moms to connect and share and get support because it is hard. And um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about today is the fact that as a mom, I often experience something called mom guilt about things I'm doing or not doing well enough. And you know, it's interesting, I was talking to someone else and they said, you know, you need to learn to become the good enough mom because we always think of ourselves as the not good enough mom, but you need to say to yourself, what you're doing is good enough. If you are taking care of your children, you're being the best mom or parent that you can be, and um, your kids know that you love them, and when you make a mistake, you tell them you're sorry, and you try to do better the next day, then you're being a good enough mom. So you need to remember that. And it's important to have other moms to share in this journey with, whether they be moms that are the same age as you or have kids the same age or mentor moms that are older that can give you advice and share um, based on the things that they struggled with. It's always important to have different friends that are in different places along the journey. And I wish I had known that sooner, but I'm so glad I know that now while my kids are still young. It's really, really important. So um, that's my little um, 
soapbox topic. Um, not having mom guilt. It's really, really important. And I'm going to look down at my notes to make sure I don't forget anything today. Um, if you were watching earlier, I talked about how sometimes as a mom, we get really distracted. And let me tell you, even as a live host, even though I know what I'm talking about, sometimes I feel a little bit distracted because there's this little voice inside me that's still thinking about what my kids are doing right now. Thankfully, um, my wonderful sister is with my three-year-old right now outside. I am in the Metro Detroit area and it is going to be almost 80, I think 81 degrees today in October, October 17th. That, I think that could be a record today. Um, there are when, there are falls where it is snowing in October in Michigan and it is not snowing today. Um, so I am really, really grateful for a wonderful fall day today. I just can't even believe it's fall. It's amazing. Um, I could be wearing shorts and a t-shirt right now. I'm not. I'm turning my computer a little bit. Um, but it's that warm outside. I, so I feel slightly distracted because I'm by a window and I know that it's really warm out. And I know that my daughter is playing outside. I'm very happy about that. Um, anyhow, my baby is sleeping and my five-year-old is at kindergarten. So if you're wondering why I don't have kids right now, it's not because I don't have them. They are just busy being taken care of right now. And everybody needs help. So make sure you have someone, if you don't have relatives um, to help you with your kids when you need a break, um, then find a good nanny. We talked about that on the last show. If you didn't catch my last show, go to the blog. I'm going to tell you one more time. Sorry. www.thebreak4moms.com and click on last week's blog. Um, last week was the 10th. So October 10th, look at that blog and you'll see the archive video from October 10th. And I give you some tips on how to find a good nanny or babysitter. So you want to check that out. Okay. Uh huh. Speaking of Michigan, so I told you I am from the Metro Detroit area. Uh, did all of you hear about the video that went viral? Actually, it was not a video. It was a picture of the mom who put the sign on her thermostat. And it, it said ask these three questions before you turn on the heat. And I thought it was funny. I saw it on Facebook, um, but it's all over the internet now. I, I don't remember how many thousands of people saw this uh, picture, but maybe you've seen it. So the first one said, are you wearing a hoodie or um, a sweater? I think, I don't quote me on these, but I'm just trying to remember what it said. Are you wearing a hoodie or a sweater? And then the second one was, is it November? And then what was the third one? I wrote it down because I didn't want to forget. Um, is it November? And she said something else. Um, oh, are you paying for the bills? Are you paying for the gas bill or who's paying for the gas bill? So the sign was up there saying you are, the kids were not allowed to turn on the heat unless they went through those three questions and answered yes to all of them. So, um, how harsh are you? Do you have wars with your kids over the temperature of your house? My kids are kind of little, so we don't, but we do in the car, actually. My five-year-old is very opinionated about whether or not he feels hot or cold, and he's usually hot. So I started dressing him a lot cooler for school, even though I feel like you know he should be wearing a jacket in the morning because it's so cold in the morning, even though it's high 70s or 80 degrees right now in October. It's still really cold when I drive him to school in the morning. So um, sometimes we have an argument about the heat or the air conditioning in the car and what he's wearing. He gets mad if I put him in something warm in the morning. Anyhow, call into the show if you want to share your thermostat wars, if you have them with your kids at home. I would be interested in hearing how you deal with that as well as in your car because that seems to be starting to be an issue in the van for us, I should say. Um, anyhow, um, nobody's calling in. So if you want to call in, I'm going to say it one more time. Um, it is 1.30. We have 30 minutes left of the show. I do have to end at 2 o'clock to be mindful of the other broadcasters who are running different shows that may start at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So um, let's keep that in mind. But there is plenty of time to call in. Um, even if you – here's an idea. Okay, so I was chatting with two of my friends yesterday, and they said, well, what if people want to call in, but they just want their voice to be heard? They don't want to be seen. Okay, look, all you have to do this is super simple. Just put something in front of your camera. Look, you can't see me now. You can put up a cute picture or just a plain piece of white paper. Not a big deal, Okay. So that's fine. If you want to be anonymous, I will see your name. You have to be signed up for an account on VidChat. So um, your name will not be anonymous, but if you're concerned about people knowing your name, you can always go into your account and create like a fake name, a pseudo name. Um, so feel free to do that as well. But you do have to have an account on VidChat. You can call from the app 
or on the desktop website. Keep in mind, you want a secure internet connection. You want to use Google Chrome or Firefox as your browser. I'm using Google Chrome right now. If you don't have either of those two browsers, you can go to either of those websites and download them for free. It is safe and secure. I downloaded both of them, had no problems. Um, and they are available for Mac or PC. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, so um, let me give you a few more do-it-yourself fall crafts. So I told you about a few. Um, two more, I wanna give you two more. Um, actually, this is kind of three more. Okay, so painting, kids like to paint. Kids of all ages like to paint. So don't think these activities are just for little, little kids. Okay, so how about painting? Let's kick up the painting a notch, okay? Because painting only goes so far. And then you wanna start using some style to your painting. So think of like pointillism and that sort of thing. You can use with your kids Oh, hi, Kara, I see a friend of mine calling into the show. Yay, I hope it goes through. Um, thanks for calling in, yay. Um, so you can use um, Q-tips in a bunch with a rubber band and dip them in paint and kind of have like a pointillism style painting with your kids and you can make that leaves for a tree if you draw a tree on a piece of paper and then take the Q-tip bunch and you know make those leaves and you can dip it in red or yellow or orange to make different shades of leaves. So that's when you can also use a brush, a cleaning brush for like your kitchen, you know, like your um, dish brush that's, you know, kind of dome shaped and you can dip that in paint too and that gives a nice texture. Hi, Kara. I can't see you yet, but I see that you're connecting. I hope it works. Hey. Hey, you there? Can you see me? Yes. Hey. So I just had to call real quick because a play date should be here any minute. Okay. Um, but anyways, it's nice to talk to you. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while. Um, no, you were about to talk about paint, I don't know, something when it cut off because I was calling it, but that did remind me about, you know, how everybody likes to paint pumpkins with their kids. Yeah, do you um, have a tip for me? No, just to say that it's totally out of my comfort zone. <laughs> like, it's out of mine too. I'm like, the mess, and so I'm just like, deep breath, they're loving this, it'll clean up, you can I know. do it. <laughs> I'm like, I do put a bib on my three-year-old. Yes, yeah, old old shirts. I had them painting like outside on cardboard and stuff. But I'm just like, you know, wanting to send your color. You know, keep all the paints in their own little colors. Don't mix the paints and just like oh, I'm casting mixing. It's, it's such an effort. One. Yeah, it's such an effort to just stay hands off and just let them do it, and they loved it, you know. And I'm like, okay, it's no big deal. But I feel yeah. like you know mom victory when I'm able to do something like that and <laughs> when it's like nothing major but <laughs> I know I have not done carving with the kids yet I have to do oh, it no. I don't I think I'm even gonna do it until they're bigger and can carve their own <laughs> but you can do I was talking about the painting you can do a bunch of q-tips together and dip in paint to do like a pointillism style oh yeah that's a yeah. good idea or um you can use like a scrub brush you know the, like the domed kitchen ones Trivia do what you know like the domed brush like that you use in the kitchen like a kitchen scrub brush for dishes uh-huh uh-huh ones that are domed and dip that and it kind of gives like a texture for doing texture. leaves good idea i was trying to think of things and i just ended up with foam brushes that yeah that i was i was like what can i have what's something round i could do dots with and none of that occurred to me hey we've got five seconds thanks for calling and go to countryliving.com they had a bunch of tips they had a bunch of great tips that was my friend kara Kara is a part of my mom's group. Um, let me tell you really quickly, if you're just tuning in today, today's show, the show for the first time, um, I have to tell you the backstory of Kara and I. So Kara is a part of a group that we are in together, similar to a MOPS group in the Metro Detroit area. And um, the first time I met Kara, she actually came to my house to deliver a meal after I had my third baby. She was a complete stranger. I didn't know her at all, but the women who were leaders in the mom's group that I belong to, created a meal train, it's called meal train, and it's similar to any other meal delivery um, sign up where people can sign up to literally deliver you a meal when you're in need, whether you have surgery or um, you're sick or family members sick or there's any other reason why people would wanna come together and deliver meals. So she signed up and she brought a meal to my door and I didn't even know her. And she brought her two kids with her and her oldest is the same age as my five-year-old son. And he came in and the two of them started playing and they connected. And I said, well, thank you so much for this meal. Gosh, it looks like the kids don't, you know, your son doesn't want to leave. We should get together for a play date. And the rest was history. And now I have this wonderful um, 
new best friend, Kara. Um, she is a wonderful friend. So thanks for calling in, Kara. And um, she is much craftier than she thinks. She's actually very organized, and she could probably give the rest of you some great organizational tips as she has me. Um, she's very neat, and um, she does a great job with her kids. And attempting to do crafts, which I think she's more bold than me because a lot of times I don't like to do crafts with my kids because they're messy, and I don't like the cleanup. And just like her, I don't want different pink colors to be mixed, but whew, I'm learning to get over that, okay? So um, I think that's all of my do-it-yourself tips, um, but I wanna check and make sure I didn't forget any. Um, oh, one more, one more. Kara, if you're still watching, here's one more fun one. So um, beans, dried beans. The cool thing about dried beans is they're naturally fall colors. Um, when you think of kidney beans or, um, oh gosh, which are the ones that are, um, you know, like lima beans, um, which ones are yellow, like dried chickpeas, I guess. I don't know. But they're all different fall colors, naturally, okay? So if you get a bunch of different colored dried beans, you can make a bean mosaic. Um, so you could glue the beans on paper or a paper plate would probably be good because beans are kind of heavy for just plain old paper. So um, get like a plastic or um, paper plate um, or a, a styrofoam plate, anything that you can glue beans on with and have the kids create some kind of mosaic. Even if, you're, if they're little, you can do an outline for them and then have them literally color it in with beans. But um, teens could do this too. You could get really, really complicated with this and then you could end up framing it. Um, if you're really happy with how it turned out. I see someone else trying to call in. The auction clock is going. Um, I don't see who it is. Oh, it says no bidder. So it looks like somebody is trying to call in and they're having trouble. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. Make sure you have a secure internet connection. Make sure you're using Google Chrome or Firefox. And if you're still having trouble, click to refresh your browser. You know, that little um, half circle with the arrow at the top of your browser. Just click on that. And um, sometimes that's all it takes to just refresh the website. Um, so, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, hi, I have 54 viewers now, so I feel like I need to introduce myself one more time. I'm Nicole, the host of The Break for Moms. And this is a show for all of you, for moms, for parents. If you're a dad, you can watch the show as well. I just shared some really fun tips for um, crafts that you can do with your kids for fall and they are easy because I am not a Pinterest woman. Um, I have an account, but only to just look at other people's things. I don't post anything. Um, I don't have great recipes. Um, I steal everybody else's recipes and ideas, um, but I like sharing them on the show because if I think it's a great idea, odds are that other parents would think they're a great idea. If you're a teacher or um, uh, you know, caretakers such as a daycare worker, some of these ideas might be good for you. So if you have friends in those positions, tell them about the show and know that you don't have to watch it live. You can catch the show at any time by watching the archive broadcast. They are all saved on the BidChat website as well as on my blog. Um, I'm gonna say it one more time. Sorry to bug those who have heard it a couple times, but I wanna make sure no one misses it. It's www.thebreak4moms.com with the number four. Go to that blog, make sure you subscribe on the right side of the page. All you have to do is put in your email address. You will not get more than one email a week from me, and it will include the previous week's archive broadcast, as well as a few tips and tricks from the week and any contest that I might be running. And speaking of contests, it's about time that I draw a name from the Us Born Book Contest that I did. I extended the contest for a couple weeks because Honestly, I have not had the viewer engagement that I wanted. I don't know why. I wish someone would call in and tell me, why do people not enter contests? All you had to do was go to the blog and subscribe by giving your email address and then going to the contest page and leaving a message at the bottom of the page with which book that you wanted to win. There were four choices um, and no one did it. But a few people did enter within the bid chat website and sent me private messages. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw from those names. You see, I'm not cheating here, okay. Um, thank you, I got a couple more. Oh, three more thumbs up, thank you so much. Um, okay, so hopefully one of the people giving a thumbs up is someone that entered the contest. And if you didn't enter the contest, all you need to do is just subscribe to the blog, thebreakformoms.com, and in the future, once I get more viewer engagement, I will definitely be running another contest. See this t-shirt back here? This is a really nice t-shirt with the show logo. You might not be able to see the whole thing. I mean, oops, there we go. The Break for Moms, okay? With that cute little clock. Um, I had a wonderful gal from an Etsy store called A Cup of Creativity design this for me. She is from Italy. 
Um, and I love Italians. They're so crappy, actually. <laughs> That's kind of a joke because I'm Italian. Um, but no, she is um, from Italy and she designed this for me and it was so cute. And um, also my uh, profile cover art with the portrait illustration of me was designed by her as well. Okay, anyways, back to the contest. I'm getting sidetracked. Okay, so you can see. All right, we didn't have many people, but I'm going to announce the winner. Dun, 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 dun. Jessica! Jessica, you know who you are. Jessica Pavetta is the contest winner. So Jessica, I will be in contact with you after the show for your Us Born book choice. Congratulations, you are the winner. So for those of you that were not winners, all you need to do to enter future contests is make sure you subscribe to the blog, www.thebreakformoms.com. Let's talk about how funny kids are. This is my segment called Kids Say the Darnest Things. Well, actually, I think somebody else's segment a long time ago was that, I don't know. You know, people always share in magazines and things, what the funny things that kids say. So my daughter, my three-year-old daughter is very, very funny. Um, she's funny because she's a middle child and um, she is very, very verbal and very clear in her um, intelligibility when she speaks. Um, she's got a very high vocabulary for a three-year-old. And, um, but when she talks, um, she gets a little mixed up sometimes. She's very smart, but she gets a little mixed up. So I realized when I listen to her talk that she says a lot of things that my husband and I say, but she doesn't quite get them right, as many kids don't, which is what's funny, is she's trying to say what we're saying, but she's not getting it quite right, and that's what makes it so funny. So I realized that my husband says, when he gets mad, he says, what the heck a lot. What the heck, you know, we do. Um, at least he says that as opposed to something else, I guess. Um, and I say, oh, man, oh, man. Okay, I say that a lot. So my daughter, getting a little bit mixed up, she says, what the man? Or she says, heck the man. So she mixes those two sayings up. And sometimes instead of saying, oh man, she says, oh ma'am. So she's um, being politically correct and making it a female form instead of man. She says, oh ma'am. Um, actually, you know, she doesn't do that on purpose. She just is mixed up. But it's so funny every time she says it. I think the funniest is when she says, heck the man. And it's how she says it because she says it really flustered like she actually is mad too. So anyhow, um, that's a good reminder to watch what you say because kids will repeat what you say. And if they're little and they get it all mixed up, then it's just a big jumble. And we wonder why do we even say those things? Because it sounds really silly when it comes out of the mouth of babes. So that's my little funny story of the day, and I'm going to keep looking at what I'm talking about. I apologize. I was not as prepared as I'd like to be today. Um, oh, okay. All right, so this is the main um, tip, the main resources for the day. I see the auction clock going, so if someone calls in, I will stop what I'm talking about to talk to them. I'm hoping it works. Five seconds. Let's talk about parent-teacher conferences. I promised you that I would talk about this. Oh, no bidder. Okay, sorry. Whoever's trying to bid in, it's not working. Try again. Refresh your screen. Um, it's going again. The auction clock is going again. Okay, so parent-teacher conferences. I have a kindergartner, so this is going to be my first major parent-teacher conferences coming up next month. But um, there's a lot of questions that you want to ask teachers. And, you know, parent-teacher conferences are not just for kids that are having problems. A lot of parents, I feel like if they have older kids and the kids are not struggling, they tend to not make it a big deal and maybe not go or not be as prepared as they should be. Whether or not your child is really successful or they're struggling, you need to be prepared and have questions to ask the teacher or teachers. You may talk to multiple teachers. Um, so you want to know, first of all, what are my child's strengths? What are my child's weaknesses? What can I do to help support what you, the teacher, are doing at home? That's important. You and the teacher are working as a team, and it's important that you let that teacher know. You're going to get a lot further with the teacher. You're more likely to get inf more information about your child if your teacher feels comfortable sharing with you. And of course, the teacher wants you to share about your child, what you know about your child, you know your child better than anybody, and what's going on at home. Are there issues going on at home that could affect your child's behavior or performance? You know, is, um, you know, divorce or uh, birth or death of a loved one, um, financial issues at home. All these things can affect kids in different ways, whether they're little kids or older kids. It, can impact their performance, it can impact their attitude. Um, it's important also to ask teachers, how is my child doing not only academically, but also socially and emotionally? You know, how does my child interact with peers? Is it age level appropriate? For older kids, you know, are they at grade level? 
It's important to know not just how are they doing, but are they at grade level? And if not, what can you do at home to bring them up to speed? That's really, really important. And of course, how can you help the teacher? How can you volunteer? If there's something you can do at home, a lot of us are working parents and it's hard to help. You've got other little ones at home, so you know you don't have someone to watch them, so you can go to the school to help, but um, there are always things that you can help out with if you are able. But you know, you don't wanna do it out of guilt. No teacher wants someone to help out of guilt because then it's not joyful for anybody and then you end up uncommitting. And I have already done that this year, let me tell you. <sighs> I volunteer for something at school and then I realized that that would be way too difficult with a three-year-old and a one-year-old that I would be dragging along um, once a week. And so I had to kind of uncommit myself, which I felt really bad about. Um, I think there was definitely a sense of mom guilt that I felt like I wanted to be there. And I felt like if I didn't volunteer to help that, you know, I didn't care about my son or, you know, I wasn't one of those moms. So you have to get out of that. You can't think that way. Um, but if you can help, it can do something small um, at home. There are usually things that teachers need help with at home or just going in one day and making photocopies, um, find out what you can do. And the most important is to support what the teacher's doing at home. And you know everybody should be doing that, but we don't always do that. So ask your child's teacher or teachers how you can help support what they're doing at school at home. And that means not just academically, but discipline-wise too. And if you're having trouble at home with your child, ask your teacher for advice. Um, if you have discipline issues at home, Check with the teacher. You don't have to feel embarrassed or judged. They probably have a, a different spin, a different way of looking at things, um, and they can provide some great structure at home. Don't be embarrassed because if you don't tap into that teacher resource, you're really the one that's suffering and missing out. And no teacher is going to judge you because there are no, there is no such thing as perfect parents. There is no such thing as perfect teachers. So um, don't feel like you're being judged. You need to seek them out for advice. So those are some really important tips. If you have any others for me for parent-teacher conferences, please feel free to call in and tell me about that. I've got parent-teacher conferences coming up in um, about three or four weeks, but I want to be prepared from now. I don't, I don't want to be blindsided, and um, I don't want to just sit down and not have anything to say because it's a very short amount of time. You don't want to take up extra time with the teacher because it's scheduled. And keep in mind, your child's teacher is tired. They've been working all day long. Usually, parent-teacher conferences are at night, or um, you know, if the kids have a half day and they go home early, then the teacher spends the other half of the day doing conferences with parents. But a lot of times it's at night. It's been a long week for the teacher. So keep that in mind too. They're tired, you're tired. Um, be sensitive to that. Um, but you know, don't, don't feel like you can't ask questions, but if you need to ask more questions and your time is up, make sure you know the best way to contact the teacher. Some teachers like email, some like prefer to be called. Um, what's the quickest way to get in contact with them? Some teachers even don't mind texting. If your teacher has a website where you can interact via the website, do that. Um, any resources that they share with you that are online, if you can get access to those, definitely do that. Do everything that you can do, um, that you can manage to do with the time that you have and then you know, contact the teacher separately after conferences have passed and are over so that you can continue the conversation if you need to. But of course, you don't wanna run over that conference time, which a lot of parents do. I used to be a teacher and there are many parents that um, stay and they don't realize that that tired teacher needs to get home to her family or his family too. So keep that in mind. Okay, um, let's make sure I didn't forget anything today. Um, oh. Let's talk about one more thing. This is kind of funny. Um, costumes. Does anybody have any good costume ideas? I have three kids and I wanted to coordinate them. So I looked and looked for great costume ideas and I ended up coming up with the simplest idea ever. My son's favorite TV show is PJ Masks and because he watches PJ Masks, so does his three-year-old sister. So unfortunately, Toys R Us started selling PJ Masks gear and toys. So um, I, I was going to order them through Toys R Us, and then I noticed Kohl's had them super cheap. Um, not half the price, but like $18 compared with $24. Party City had them for closer to $30. So um, Kohl's, if you're looking for costumes, Kohl's is the cheapest. But here was the problem with Kohl's.com. You have to order online. They don't have them in the store. And um, they were out of stock. So I called Kohl's.com. They said, don't worry, give it 24 to 48 hours, and they will be back in stock. There are still two weeks until Halloween. Well... They never came back in stock, which was kind of disappointing. So I ended up ordering them from Toys R Us. But right now, Toys R Us is doing free shipping for costumes, and many of them are on sale. So if you are a procrastinator like me and you need a Halloween costume for your kids, um, you can go to Toys R Us, and they have 
pretty good variety. I think they're still cheaper than Party City or other party places. Um, I'm not huge on Halloween. Um, I'm more of the trunk or treater and dress up activities outside of actual door to door trick or treating. I don't know, my kids are little and I don't know how I feel about all of that. But there are some safe, nice alternatives to traditional trick or treating. The mall is a great one. Um, if you know of a big mall, go to a big mall um, because some stores might not participate in handing out candy. So go to the mall. Um, you can do that usually on the day of Halloween, but it may be a different scheduled day depending on your area. The mall is one. Um, most churches do some sort of trunk or treat event or dress up event. Um, and also museums usually have a dress up day. Um, I am within the driving distance of Henry Ford Museum and um, Greenfield Village, if you've heard of that. Um, I don't know what areas all of you are watching from, but that's an area where there's a dress up day. And of course there are many, many other places. So um, check out your local library. I mentioned that a lot on the show. Local libraries have a lot of information as well as um, if you have some type of Metro Parent Magazine, Michigan has one. Um, but anywhere where you get your kid news, local news, will post information on different programs going on where kids can dress up and get candy. And some of those are definitely, I would agree, safer options. We just don't know our neighbors like we used to. Many people don't even go to their neighborhood. They go to other neighborhoods, which I don't know how I feel about that. I used to do it as a kid. So, I mean, you know, I did it, but I don't know. It's different times now that we're living in. So be careful, be safe. Um, but know that you can go to Kohl's.com or Toys R Us and get some good deals for Halloween costumes. Um, Kohl's.com does have a free shipping code. I don't know if it's so good. Um, I ended up ordering PJ Masks pajamas for my one-year-old because they didn't have the toddler size for her to have one of the costumes. But um, pajamas can be a great Halloween costume alternative for little ones. You'll pay a lot less money and you can still kind of get the um, characters on there and you know you could dress it up with a hat or something so if you're looking for low cost Halloween costumes some, don't discount pajamas or your local thrift store those are great dollar stores five and below I know I've mentioned that store on the show a few times because it's for moms like me on a budget I am on a budget five and below has some little accessories if you're just looking for accessories your dollar store um, and those are just a few ideas of course so good luck with that um, and you know again even you can check not only your local library, but your local city, um, your city administrative building, or if they have a website, your local city website, check on social media and see what's going on in your town or city. Those are great options. And usually they have some family friendly events for kids of all ages, because sometimes Halloween can get what I feel is a little unfamily friendly. It gets a little too scary. Um, and that's the part of Halloween I don't like. Um, the dressing up I like, but other things I don't like so much. So. Be safe. Um, keep that in mind. I see that the auction clock keeps running like someone's trying to call in and it's not working, which is a bummer because I want to talk to someone else. I'm just talking to myself. Um, so I'm waving my hands here and doing all this talking and I'm so excited about what I'm talking about. But I want to know what you have to say. All of you as moms and parents have a lot of good information to share with me. You saw my friend Kara call in. So you see that it can be done successfully. Um, she had no trouble calling in today. So I would imagine that none of you would either. If you are a new follower to the show, um, I will send you 100 Bitcoins as a new follower. All you have to do to become a new follower is click the heart icon at the bottom of this video. It will turn red, which means you are automatically a new follower. I will get a notification after the show and I will send you 100 Bitcoins. So hurry up, make sure you follow the show if you haven't already. Um, my Bitcoins are running out. I had about 3,000 and now I have under 2,000, which sounds like a lot, but 100 here, 100 there goes fast. So make sure, tell your friends, tell your family. Um, until I run out of those Bitcoins, I am passing them out. And you can use those to call into the show for free. The minimum that you can bid to call into the show is 100 Bitcoins for one minute. And I can extend your call for an additional minute for free. So you can actually get two minutes of a call with me for free, technically, after you become a follower and I send you those 100 Bitcoins. So keep that in mind. You don't have to pay anything at this point. And of course, I want to give a shout out to my fellow broadcasters. There are many great shows on BidChat, so stick around if you have time. Check out those other shows. Um, of course, they would love to have you call into their shows as well. We all would. We're all still new at this. Um, BidChat um, was born this year, and it's it's still in its um, infancy stage, if you will, no pun intended. Um, but we're still getting used to the website, and callers are still getting used to calling in. And um, 
So, it, you know, it's, it's good practice for us. It's good practice for you. And if you make a mistake, that's okay. Um, keep trying. I see that somebody is still trying. I'm sorry about that, but it's not working. But we've got 13 thumbs up on the show, which is awesome. 74 viewers right now live, which is really, really cool. Thank you so much for taking a break from your day to watch the show. We have five minutes left. I'm holding out hope that somebody might call in. I'm, I've asked all my friends to call in, but um, it goes beyond just my friends and family. I want to meet new people. I want to meet new moms, new dads. Um, I want to hear about your struggles. I want to hear about your successes. I want to celebrate this journey with you, and I want to be here for you however I can. If you have ideas for the show or you'd like to be um, an expert to call into the show, um, eventually I hope to get some software going that will allow me to include pre-taped footage. So if you would like to share some pre-taped footage on the show as an expert, you will eventually hopefully be able to do that. In the meantime, I can invite callers to call in as experts and um, we can get you a three to five minute call and you can call into the show and talk to the viewers here on the show live with me and talk to me and that would be awesome as well. So if you are someone out on social media, you can reach out to me and The Break For Moms on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook at The Break For Moms, use the number four. And you can also go to the blog, which I mentioned. I'm going to say it one more time because we have 75 viewers. And the last time I mentioned it, we only had about 50 viewers. My blog, the show blog, is www.thebreak4moms.com with the number four. Make sure you subscribe to the blog. You will get all the latest videos and tips and resources from each week's show. So if you miss a broadcast or you have a friend that cannot watch the live show, friend or family member, you can share it with them. Tell them about the blog. Have them subscribe. The Break for Moms is also currently on YouTube. I started a Vimeo account, but I'm not so sure about Vimeo. They have certain rules about how much you can post. So you can go to YouTube as well and share today's broadcast after I take the next hour after the show to get things up on social media so that they can be shared. You can share this archive broadcast across social media. And if you call into the show, did you know you can also share your moment with me and share that across social media? So that's a great way to advertise for the show and to share with your friends that may need some support. How many of you know of another mom that probably could use another friend? Use a shoulder to cry in, use some support, use someone that's further ahead of them in the journey to offer advice to, or just to say, hey, you know, pat yourself on the back, you're doing okay. It, this is tough, but you've got this. Um, I know plenty of people, I know you do too. Um, I meet them at the grocery store, I meet them at the library. Um, being a mom or you know a parent can sometimes be lonely especially in those moments where you're home by yourself with the kids um regardless of your family situation we all have those moments where we feel kind of alone like um we're doing it all ourselves and we need help so that's what this show is about and it's also about you personally taking a break to make yourself healthy to get support but also to socialize and to um take your mind off things and just you know feel like you are getting encouragement and support and feeling positive and just to you know feel rejuvenated so that's what the show is about and i'm going to end the show in about two minutes we have 81 82 viewers awesome thank you so much for tuning in i'm so sorry that i'm about to end this broadcast um but you can catch this show the break for moms every monday at 1 p.m eastern time so mark your calendar okay you can go back after this broadcast is over in about one minute and you can watch the whole thing from the beginning. You can also subscribe to the blog, www.thebreakformoms.com. Use the number four, just like my nice little t-shirt here with the show logo. And I'm hoping that when I get 100 subscribers on my new blog, okay, I just mentioned it, go to that blog. If you're not sure, just type in the Break for Moms on the internet and you'll pull up all of the social media pages. Go to the blog, sign up. On the right side of the website is a space that says subscribe via email. Just put in your email, please, please, please. I will know that you are a new subscriber. When I get 100 subscribers on the blog, I'm going to give away another one of these t-shirts. And I really want to do that. I have a whole bag of them in my closet, all different sizes. And I want to give one away. Isn't it cute? I love this shirt. I actually got a onesie um, in a little t-shirt for my two little girls. I didn't get one for my son. I don't know what to do about my son because it's pink. I don't know how all of you feel about that. Um, I'm gonna have to do something with the logo on it for him. I didn't get him the shirt. I wasn't sure how he feel about the shirt. Um, anyways, they're super cute. I have one for me and I gave one to all my friends and I want a lucky winner and show viewer to get one of these as well. 
So tell your friends, tell your family, it is 2 o'clock. I need to run, so I'm going to close out this broadcast. But do share this archive broadcast. Watch from the beginning if you're just tuning in. And I want to let you know you can do this, moms. You've got this. Have a wonderful week. Make sure you take time out for yourself because every mom needs a break. And that's why we have The Break for Moms. It's a great new show. Share it with your friends and family. And I can't wait to see you next week. Bye and enjoy fall.